The tragic mass shooting in Buffalo, New York on Saturday that left 10 people dead has rekindled nationwide debate over the place of guns in society. Just days after the attack, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives released a report highlighting gun commerce since 2000. The report found U.S. gun production has nearly tripled in the past two decades. Joining us now for more on this is the Senior Vice President for Law and Policy at Everytown for Gun Safety, Nick Saplina. Nick, welcome. It's so great to have you with us. You know, maybe you can tell us about the biggest takeaways from this report, because I know in years past, after mass shootings that get a lot of attention, as they are wont to do, of course, that gun sales actually go up in this country. Um, can you explain that connection? And, and again, what are the biggest takeaways from your report? Well, for starters, yes, that's right. Sometimes after mass shootings, we do see, see uh, gun violent, uh, gun sales uh, increase, and the reasons are multifold. Uh, sometimes it is that people are concerned and and fearful and and uh, decide to purchase a gun. Sometimes it's because uh, the gun industry itself. Uh, fear mongers and says, uh, you know, oh, there may be a move towards greater gun restrictions. Now's the time to buy a firearm. Uh, that's a misleading argument that the gun industry has talked about in internal documents for years about, you know, the bump that they get out of fear of action. Of course, what the lawmakers on the Hill that you were just covering uh, are proposing is never uh, anything that would uh, reduce the ability to acquire a firearm. These are just common sense protections uh, to keep guns out of the hands of those like the Buffalo shooter who should not have had them. And, and Nick, this report also reveals that in 2021, police recovered more than 19,000 untraceable weapons known as ghost guns. Uh, that is a tenfold increase from just 2016. So what is behind this and how significant is this finding? This is this is enormous, and and the ghost guns problem is really uh, one of great focus as it should be for uh, ATF and for the Biden administration. Ghost guns went from not a, a, a commodity that was in much circulation. These homemade, untraceable firearms uh, have really exploded. These are the weapons of choice of criminals, of extremists, of those who want to stay as far away from uh, regulation and oversight as possible. Uh, and what's telling in this report, and I can go back and discuss a little bit more about what the report says more broadly, but what's really telling is that ATF is only reporting guns recovered in crimes uh, because they don't know how many of these ghost guns are in circulation. They don't know how many of these uh, guns are being manufactured because they've been off the books. Of course, the Biden administration has taken action uh, and there's a forthcoming rule that should rein in ghost guns. Um, I should say, you know, the report more, more broadly shows that while the gun industry has expanded dramatically uh, over the years, ATF and its ability to regulate uh, those uh, companies has not and has lagged behind. And as we deal with a gun violence spike in this country, I think we have to see a connection there and we need to do something about it. So, you know, Nick, a lot of people uh, say, hey, you know, reports are good, they're important, they're helpful, but they want to know exactly how your organization will use this information to better advocate for gun safety policies, because I think Everyone can agree, regardless of where you stand on the scope of the Second Amendment, that guns should not be in the hands of dangerous individuals, right? So um, what are your plans to use this report? So there's a couple of key findings in this report that are consistent with what we've been calling for for years. Um, one of the findings is that one in three ATF inspections of dealers and manufacturers results in a serious violation. And yet the report quietly admits that only 1% of those uh, inspections leads to a recommendation of a revocation of a license. This can't be, these, these are dangerous commodities. Uh, so greater regulation and resources for ATF to conduct these uh, uh, inspections, but also to do something about them. The report also notes 40,000 stolen guns from dealers and manufacturers and another uh, about the same uh, lost these are guns that are ending up in the hands of criminals and in gun trafficking rings. Uh, we're not talking about losing handbags here. We're talking about firearms. Mm. And so we, again, believe that there are 
state and federal rules that could be put in place that would require these dealers and manufacturers to better safeguard their inventory. Mm -hmm. Again, if we want uh, you know, access to firearms as a country, if we want the right to ownership, the industry is going to have to do its part to right. protect the public and simply is not doing that. Well, Nick Saplina with Everytown Gun Safety, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight into this very important issue. Thank you.